solving linear systems by elimination. Um, there's many ways to solve it. You can graph, uh, substitute, um, we're going to use the style of elimination. There's even little formulas you can build to do it, but we're going to do elimination. So um, usually with elimination, what you want to do is stack one equation on top of the other. So we have two linear equations here. So we'll call it equation one and equation two. And they, on a graph, do something. And unless they're parallel or identical, they intersect at some point. So we're going to stack one on top of the other. I'm going to start to line some stuff up. So luckily, because I'm on a computer, I don't really need to rewrite it. I can just stack it up just like this. So what's helpful is if we kind of keep the equal signs in line and we have our variables all kind of in the same column. OK, so we have our x's, our y's and our, our constant values together. Um, they actually don't matter which side of the equal, um, equal sign they're on, just as long as everything's kind of lined up. OK, um, don't have um, equals zero and like plus one here, that doesn't work out very well. If you're going to have a, a constant on one side of the equal sign, make sure you have the other one there or a variable. Um, anyways, so once things are all nice and lined up, um, the key is to get coefficients in front of the variables that are the same. Um, and it turns out this one actually works out very, very nicely. So I'm going to do it the hard way instead. Um, if we take a look, this is positive one and this is negative one. That means the coefficients, the absolute values of them, are the same. So I don't actually have to do any manipulating of the equations. I can kind of just isolate really, really quickly. Um, so actually, let's, let's do that to start, and then we'll do the other one by elimination. So because this is positive 1 and this is negative 1, when I'm eliminating, I can choose to either add or subtract. It doesn't matter as long as I eliminate one of the variables. Um, if I have positive 1 and negative 1, which operation will create a 0 with those values? Um, negative. Um, if I had negative, it'll be positive 1 minus, minus negative minus. 1. So okay, then so it. Yeah. So that would have ended up as 2. So good. And you would have figured that out as you went through. So sometimes you got to do a little trial in there. But that's good. So we're going to add these two equations together. So it almost looks like elementary style addition, right? We're going to add, we're going to add each column. So negative 1 and 6 gives us 5. Okay. Positive 1 and negative 1 gives us 0y. I don't need to write 0y because 0 times anything is 0, so that disappears. So just kind of think of it like it eliminates, and that's the whole idea behind this title is eliminating. And then 4 and 6 is 10x. Okay, So now we can kind of squeeze them a little closer together. 10x is equal to 5. And to isolate for x, I divide both sides by 10, and x is equal to 1 half, or 0 0.5. Now I could use substitution and plug it into another equation, but I, the whole point of this is to do elimination. So we're going to, instead of eliminating the y, we're going to eliminate the x in this version. So we'll write the same stuff over again, 4x uh, plus y. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move it to this side. When I move negative 1 over, it would be positive 1 equals 0, just to give us something a little different to look at. All we did was move the negative 1 over. And here we'll have 6x minus y. Um, minus 6, when 6 comes on the other side, equals is equal to 0, okay? Technically, everything's lined up. We have all of our columns together, our x's, our y's, our constants, and zeros, okay? So you can have 4 if you really want. This is not going to do much for us, but um, now in this one, here's equation 1, and here's equation 2. We want to eliminate the x values. In order to eliminate the x values, the coefficients need to be the same, and that is not the case right now. Okay, so the best way to do that is to multiply by the other coefficient. Okay, so we're going to multiply all of equation one by six. Okay, and we're going to multiply all of equation two by four. Maybe I'll we'll use a different color just so you can, you can see what we're the purpose between that. And that way we're going to guarantee that we're going to have the same coefficients. Now, whatever we multiply, we have to do the entire equation by that. So the new equation 1, equation 1 times 6, will now read 6 times 4 is 24x, okay, plus 6y, uh, 6 times 1 is 6, and 0 times 6 is well, still 0. And then our equation 2 times 4 is going to be 24x minus 4y um, minus 24 and 0 times 4 is 0. So again, we set this up like elementary addition and subtraction. This time, though, um, the two coefficients are both positive. So we need to either add or subtract. Which of these operations do you think we need to do here to eliminate these? Subtract. Yeah, we need to subtract. So we're going to subtract all the values in this equation. So 24, subtract 24 is 0. So that's 0x. We don't need to write it. It doesn't do much for us. 
This is where it gets a little tricky when subtracting. Six minus negative four is like adding. So in this case, we'd end up with 10 y. So it's like six plus four, okay? Here we get six minus negative 24, which is the same as six plus 24. So we get positive 30. And zero minus zero is still zero, okay? But now we have just one variable and the whole idea is to just isolate this. Now, by doing what we did, I kind of made the question longer, but just to give you a different view. Um, we gotta get all the constants or numbers on one and variables on the other. So when I move 30 over to the other side, it will become negative 30, okay? And to isolate for y, we divide both sides by 10 because it's multiplication here, and y is equal to negative three. So these two lines intersect each other at one half and negative three. And I'm sure if we were to graph it, can I graph it nicely? Uh, oh, look, we have it right there. Um, 0.5 and negative three is exactly where these two lines meet each other, okay?